First things first, I'm a, I'm a little bit ill today, ladies and gentlemen. I took yesterday off because of my, uh, my voice. I, I didn't have a good voice. I wasn't completely mute, but man, it did not sound good. And it doesn't sound good right now. With that said, um, we're gonna start things out with saying that my daughter got the Meowth version of Build-A-Bear. Now this is a this is a pretty decent build a bear. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how nice build a bears are these days. Okay, this is the Charmander one. I bought this one for her last year, but you can see how far they've come. This Charmander, it, it looks like it got the short stick when it comes to genetics. All right, it's not looking so great. T 10 out of 10 effort. There's no questioning this. This was one of the original long time ago Charmanders. It's been quite old, probably over 20 years old. Okay. This is the Build-A-Bear Charmander. Looks really good. 10 out of 10. Awesome. Got got the long stick on genetic superiority. Now, this is Meowth. This is Meowth. Cool Team Rocket shirt. Even has Jesse, James, and Meowth right here on the bottom. You can see that. That's really, really cool. Uh, there's just one tiny, minuscule, little problem. Uh, its coin is attached at the bottom. So instead of this Meowth looking like a Meowth, it looks like a unicorn version of Meowth. Who said that this was a good idea? Who approved this? Seriously, this is a, uh, this is horrible. But aside from that, it's a it's a pretty good Meowth. Just, just why, why, why didn't you attach it in the center here? Why? Having said that, let's jump right into the news. Today, we're talking about the eShop being down for Christmas, but it's still down due to the influx of new Nintendo account and network IDs, which is really unfortunate because a lot of people got Nintendo Switches for Christmas. This isn't any surprise because, as aforementioned, a lot of people got Nintendo stuff for Christmas. But this does affect the 3DS also, this affects the iOS and Android store, this affects any PC logins, and this affects, of course, the Nintendo Switch as well. So if you were looking to get on the eShop and download some cool games, don't worry about it, it's not your software, it's not your hardware, it's not your specific things, it is literally um, an influx of a lot of people connecting in. So, uh, what Mario Odyssey Breath of the Wild developers thought about each other's games has come out. A lot of people highlighted this and talked about this and said that this was very interesting that these producers of both Zelda Breath of the Wild and Mario Odyssey talked about each other's games. One of them said, hey man, you know, I really like the 3D to 2D sections where you go in and you instantly go into a side-scrolling portion on Mario Odyssey. That was a big thumbs up. He really, really liked that. It reminded him a bit like uh, Zelda with the curve and walk around walls. That would be a Zelda, the newest Zelda for the 3DS, uh, A Link Between Worlds, I believe. And that was pretty cool. And then the other one was talking about uh, Mario being able to implement so many ideas that they were kind of jealous. That was jokingly, though. You know, you know what I mean? Like, man, I really wish I could implement that idea in Zelda, but it just wouldn't work because people won't accept it. That's how it is. That's how Zelda is. But they, they did say that their favorite part was being able to climb atop mountains, the highest mountain in Zelda. So you can check out this interview. It is with uh, Angie Anoma and the producers of Super Mario uh, Odyssey as well. Um, Yoshaki uh, Kuiz Kozomai, Kazumai. I'm not, not good at pronouncing names. I've said this a million times, but all due respect to them for creating those great games. Devil May Cry Mobile is a game that has been announced for China. Um, this is apparently an RPG action RPG specifically so it's not it's not the Devil May Cry you might know about this um, this is an interesting uh, game it's called Devil May Cry Pinnacle of Combat and it will be uh, published soon in 2018 it's a China release no word of international releases weird very very strange uh, I'm not sure if it's if it's gonna be an adventure type of RPG. From what I can see from the photos, it looks very similar to that, but I don't know if you'd really like to use a virtual thumbstick on a Devil May Cry game. It's hard enough with physical controls, now you're putting in uh, virtual controls which are not, not the most accurate. It's going to be very difficult to get through the game if it is as hard as previous Devil May Cry entries, but there you go. So maybe we'll be seeing Devil May Cry 
mobile games coming to America and other countries, obviously. The makers of Leroy Jenkins didn't think anyone would believe it was real. If you didn't know, a long time ago, there was a World of Warcraft game that was really, really popular. It's still popular today, but about 2005-ish is when this was popular, almost 12 years ago. Apparently, there was a raid group put together, uh, and they were going to go in and raid, and there was some pre-planning that was necessary before they did this, and what ended up happening is one guy uh, yelled out Leroy Jenkins and ran straight through instead of uh, planning with everyone else, and he was going to take on everything himself. And this is a video that went viral back in the day before viral videos went viral. So they believed that no one would believe that it was real when they remade the video. What ended up happening, why they ended up remaking and remastering this thing, was due to the simple fact of net neutrality coming out. Because when they originally put this out, because of how much bandwidth their server got for the video itself being so viral, for people watching it and wanting to join their clan and, and check it out and check out the video and the bandwidth usage, because of the viral video, what ended up happening is that the ISP, the internet service provider, sent them a nasty email saying that their usage was ridiculous and that at this point in time it was out of their hands. They said that the video was already everywhere and a lot of people, uh, well, you know, a lot of people had seen it and the ISPs weren't happy with them. So basically they're correlating and relating this to what will happen with net neutrality if you don't, um, you know, take a stand for net neutrality that the ISPs will cut you basically so you can check into this story and look at it and it's uh it's it's a pretty good story I like it hackers say that Nintendo Switch's uh, latest firmware update removes the secret golf game this is true it's been replaced with garbage code so you cannot launch it manually you cannot hack into it garbage code will not launch the uh, game itself which is unfortunate the game is still there it's just not launchable so I don't know what's up with that. Maybe they're implementing the ROMs and the emulation and the arcade games, the Mario Versus that has recently been touted and talked about. Maybe it has to do with that. Maybe it doesn't. So there's that. Thousands of people were watching Overwatch's Jeff Kaplan sit motionless in front of a Yule log. Yes, this was a thing. There was a stream where Jeff Kaplan was sitting in front of a Yule log burning with cookies and milk off to his side. Now a lot of people had picked up on it being a loop several times where there were places where it would loop over and over again. Some people didn't like that it was on a loop and they started dropping off but there were things that did happen throughout the stream that changed stuff. A lot of people were saying hashtag free Kaplan, uh, free Jeff, things like that. And then at the end he, he basically broke down and was talking about how that the cookies were not even real that the milk had probably become poisonous and things like that and I, I i don't know this this is entertainment ladies and gentlemen 2017 the end of the year and thousands of people were watching a guy sit in front of a fireplace just because he was the producer or or head guy over at overwatch uh, essentially is what it boils down to because he was a popular star people were watching him that's that's about all there is to the story so Gaming disorder is now officially a mental condition, according to The Who. You might be asking yourself, The Who? You mean the band? No, no, not not them. Uh, the Who is actually for the dinner, disease control and humanitarian emergencies. That would be the CDC, Center of Disease Control. That's essentially what it boils down to. So, the behavior pattern is sufficient for severity to result in significant impairment of personal, family, social, educational, occupational, or other important area functioning. That's what the draft of this reads. And the gaming behavior and other features are normally evident over a period of at least 12 months in order to diagnose and be assigned. Although the required duration may be shortened if all diagnostic requirements are met and the symptoms are severe basically what they're saying is that if you're addicted to video games and it is causing you serious harm in your life you might be able to appeal this to your insurance providers and get coverage for therapy to become unaddicted to these video games I am telling you right now this is going to be ripe with abuse if alcohol addiction could be ripe for abuse this 
definitely can be abused. And my God, how many people are going to abuse this? I'm going to tell you it's probably going to be removed by the end of this. I can almost guarantee you that the insurance companies aren't going to cover this for almost anybody. You, you probably have to have some of the best insurance in the world to get this covered. Uh, therapy for video game addiction is something that is serious. You know, if you're you're seriously addicted to video games. I sympathize with you and I empathize with you. But loving video games and having it as an, a hobby. This is what you do. You don't watch TV. You don't play football. You don't go to sports bars. You, you play video games. This is what you do. You like video games. There's nothing wrong with that. There is nothing at all wrong with that. I'm going to tell you right now, I've had several mental health classes in my training to become a minister, and I'm going to tell you, I, I really have. I've had psychological classes that I've had to take, and the only way that this is really going to count, constitute a disorder is that if it really does impair your standard life. Like, basically, you're playing video games instead of going to work and paying your rent. You know, now everyone's going to sit here and say, oh my god, that's basically everyone. Everyone wants to play video games instead of work. Yeah, no duh. Everyone's going to want to play video games games over almost everything in life because video games are more appealing most of the time most of the time not all of the time so there are many times in life where you're going to want to do what you're going to do but i can just see so many soccer moms using this oh my kid he she he she only wants to play video games she doesn't want to do homework or nothing we gotta get her treated for the disorder oh my goodness and it's just like You're a bad parent. That's all it is. You're a bad parent. Don't try to diagnose them with a condition that doesn't exist for them. You're just a bad parent. You don't set limits. You don't set boundaries. You don't take them to the park. You don't give them the love and the time that they need. You are a bad parent. They aren't hooked to video games because you're a good parent. They're hooked to video games because they want to escape their reality. So I can almost guarantee you that this stuff is going to come out as well. Which is very unfortunate because now we, we have to acknowledge that there is a serious problem with people being addicted to video games. More so than just, hey, I just want to play video games as my hobby and I really don't want to do anything else. Uh, you know what I do? You know what I do? I like YouTube. I like video games. I like spending time with my family. I like movies. But I rarely watch TV and I rarely have time to play sports. I go to the gym, I have my own personal gym, I go running, I work out and things like that. I have a pretty balanced life, man. But really, most of my life is centered around video games. And this is really going to be a serious problem for a lot of people like me. So ladies and gentlemen, my heater has kicked off. Uh, <coughs> I'm, <coughs> I'm slowly dying. <coughs> I'm, I'm dying, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, I'm going to go get some rest, okay? Uh, I, I will see you guys in the next episode. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a big thumbs up and share this. What do you think about video games becoming an addiction? Do you believe it's a real thing? Do you believe that it's something that should be recognized by insurance companies? Or do you think that it is bullcrap and just another way to try and kick down people who like to play video games? If you dislike this video, leave a dislike and tell me what I can do better besides coughing and dying. You know, I, I'll try to get on fixing that okay uh i'm i'm gonna see you guys uh next time i've been your host Pritamari, and i'm signing out as always good gaming god bless and thank you for watching